It is showdown time in the United States Senate over Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. His confirmation hearings open today with a Donnybrook over unreleased documents and repeated protests from observers. Congressional correspondent Lisa Desjardins begins our coverage. It took just 10 seconds for the hearing. Good morning. To get contentious. I welcome everyone to this confirmation hearing on the nomination of Mr. Judge Chairman. Brett Kavanaugh. Mr. Chairman. To serve as Associate Justice. Mr. Chairman, on the I'd like Supreme to be recognized for a United question States. before we proceed. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to be recognized to ask a question before we proceed. The committee received just last night, less than 15 hours ago, 42,000 pages of documents that we have not had an opportunity to review or read or analyze. You are out, you're out of order. I'll proceed. One by one, Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee derailed the plan for opening statements and demanded more time to review Judge Brett Kavanaugh's massive public record. We believe this hearing should be postponed. Mr. Chairman, if, if we cannot be recognized, I move to adjourn. The American people. Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Directly from Judge Kavanaugh later this afternoon. I move. Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. The melee continued for more than an hour. Republicans pushed back. How ridiculous it is to say that uh, we don't have uh, the records that it takes to determine this person qualified to be on the Supreme Court when all the documents we have add up to more than we have had for the last five Supreme Court nominees. I would suggest that if this were a court of law, that virtually every side, every member of the, on the dais on the, that side would be held in contempt of court. Oh, come on. At some point, are we going to get to hear from the nominee? All this amidst a barrage of interrupting protesters inside the room. Capitol Police escorted them out, leaving empty seats in the back and openly frustrated Republicans in front. Frankly, uh, these people are so out of line, they shouldn't even be allowed in the doggone room. There were more protesters outside the room. This group's outfits referencing the television show The Handmaid's Tale, a symbol of women's rights and of the drama at the hearing itself. And let's talk to our own Lisa, who was in the hearing room. Lisa, it was not what everybody expected. <laughs> No, it was not. It was really remarkable, Judy. I've been to a lot of contentious hearings, especially in the last one and a half years, and this sort of outranks them all, and this is just day one. That's right. Uh, I think starting from the beginning, as you, as you saw, it, the hearing barely got underway when the Democratic senators, and we knew that they, there was unrest among Democrats about uh, the failure of the White House to release some documents of uh, a lawyer representing uh, President George W. Bush, in whose administration Brett Kavanaugh worked. But what we didn't realize that we were going to see all 10 Democrats on the Judiciary Committee ultimately express uh, extreme unhappiness and call for the hearing to stop. That's right. They took turns. They were clearly unified. They had spent a lot of time strategizing, Judy. And in the end, what they were talking about today most specifically were those 40,000 plus pages of documents that they just got last night. But really, the bigger issue is just the massive amount of paper in Brett Kavanaugh's history. Democrats especially would like to see documents pertaining to the time he spent as White House staff secretary. That's when he saw perhaps millions of pages of documents cross his desk. He may have rung in on them or not. But they do not have access to that at all. And they're complaining about that. Those documents will be eventually made public, but they haven't yet. Meanwhile, Judy, you know, it was also contentious, of course, in the crowd. And Capitol Police just emailed us, said that overall they made some 61 removals from that room. That's really remar remarkable because there were just 40 seats for the public. So what was happening, protesters were coming in, being taken out, and the next people in line were often other protesters. It, at one point, it looked like virtually everybody who was there to watch the hearing was being... I think that's right. ...was being taken away, uh, who wasn't part of the uh, part of the Kavanaugh group or the press. So the day did move on. It moved on to statements by the senators, which is what was planned. And uh, let's take a listen to what happened next. Here's more of Lisa's report. I think it's really important that... Democrats both, pressed on specific well issues, often the way. most controversial um, issues in American life. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about one of the big decisions that we have the belief 
that it, although you told um, Senator Collins that you believed it was settled law, the question is really, do you believe that it's correct law? And that's Roe v. Wade. The president that nominated you has said, I will nominate someone who is anti-choice and pro-gun. And we believe what he said. The NRA has poured millions into your confirmation, promising their members that you'll break the tie. They clearly have big expectations on how you'll vote on guns. You are aspiring to be the most decisive vote on the Supreme Court on critical issues. Over and above all of those things is this. You are the nominee of President Donald John Trump. This is a president who's shown us consistently that he is contemptuous of the rule of law. And it's that president who's decided you are his man. You're the person he wants on the Supreme Court. You are his personal choice. So are people nervous about this? Are they concerned about it? Of course they are. Kavanaugh listened attentively but silently. Republicans tried to speak for him, charging that Democrats were inflaming Senator, partisan emotions. And I sincerely hope this week we can all take a deep breath. We're not doing very well so far. <laughs> and get a grip and treat this process with the respect mm -hmm. and gravity it demands. Go ask anyone who practices regularly before the Supreme Court who doesn't have a partisan agenda, and they'll tell you Judge Kavanaugh is exactly the kind of person we should have on the court. You are independent. You've written that, quote, some of the greatest moments in American judicial history have been when judges stood up to the other branches. Everyone knows that you served in the Bush administration. And yet, when you became a judge, in only two years, you ruled against the Bush administration a total of eight times. For you, it simply doesn't matter who the parties are. 